Obviously, everybody knows what happened with our former chief. I sat there talking to the, the head hunter, because you can use that word, and he asked me, you know, what was I looking for? I, right away, I said, you know what? I got the guy that I'm looking for. So I asked for this item to be put on. The freeze on the uh, looking, the, the, the go, moving forward with, with the new chief, the, with the head hunter. And I just don't think we should be making the chief's position a permanent one if the permanency could be a very short time. What I feel is the importance <clears throat> of hiring from outside. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I'm not ready to make him chief tonight, I will go against my gut and strongly consider it. Where were we on the search? It has not gone live. It's not out there. There's no candidates. I made a promise that we would not promote from within. Give him the damn job. We're going to make you chief. We've been burned in the past. We thought we made the right decisions in the past. And all we're asking for is a little bit more time. I, I will make a motion that we make Chief Palmer chief. So item 8A is discussion possible action related to the police chief. Okay, basically... Um, no, I asked for this item to be put on. Um, obviously, everybody knows what happened with our former chief, and now we have our new chief. New chief came in, voted on 5-0, and I think at that time, um, some of us and even him were probably under the impression, you know, just go in there temporarily and see what you can do and see what happens. Um, within those last few months or last few weeks, we've been looking outside for a, a new chief. We've all, I think, been interviewed, been talked to about what we're looking for. And I can honestly tell you, I sat there talking to the, uh, the head hunter, I guess you can use that word. And when I was done, and the question he asked me, you know, what was I looking for? I, right away, I said, you know what? I got the guy that I'm looking for. Little did, I mean, I only talked to Mike probably one time with the city manager. But I heard about the policies that he's putting in place, the internal policies, the moves he's making. And you know what? I probably said some things the last time you guys were here at a meeting. You know, I was just talking emotionally. Um, we have a great department here. I just think the culture of it, you know, just needed to be changed a little bit. I think it needs to be tweaked. And after meeting that headhunter and knowing that time was of the essence because it could have came up next meeting that, you know, we're going to move forward with uh, introductions or uh, meetings with a possible new chief, I didn't want to do that. So I asked for this item to be put on to basically put a freeze on the uh, the looking, the, the, the go moving forward with, with the new chief, uh, the, with the headhunter. So I, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of tough because you don't know what's out there. We know what we have now. I've spoken to a lot of people in the department. You can see that there's a lot of people here supporting the chief. And I'm assuming they're all supporting the chief. Um, I think he's a great guy. I think he's he's just one of those guys that is is a different kind of a chief than what we've had in the past, and I think every one of them was different. But Chief Palmer is the kind of guy where he stood up and he said, "You know what? I'll take that position, and I want him to be here. I want him to be the number one guy." You know, if we did go outside and we did get a number a, a new chief, you know what's going to happen to Chief Palmer? I think he's earned his stripes or wings, whatever you want to say, in the last few weeks. And I know it's our job to pick and choose the chief. I know the city manager works with him every day, has everyday interactions with him. Um, and Kelly, I've never really asked you, how, I mean, how are things going with you and <laughs> Chief Palmer? You don't mind me asking. Not at all. Um, things are going great with Chief Palmer. I, I, would, um, I would recommend it. Absolutely. You would? Because you know, even though we do the the, the picking, it's it's the city manager still supervises and oversees it. So, Mike, I think you're doing a great job. I just you know hope that I could open up this discussion with the other commissioners to possibly put the uh, the new chief on hold or terminated or whatever you guys want to do. Um, so, I'm just going to open it up right now. If anybody would like to speak, I would be happy to hear it. Um, Commissioner Kajan. I'm a huge fan of Mike. I've been a huge fan of Mike for many years. But as I've had conversations with Mike about this, <clears throat> we're in a uh, situation where just last meeting, we were talking about BSO. The meeting before that, we were talking about getting a new pl uh, going out and hiring from outside, and that the chief could put in an application if he wanted it. I don't have a problem with putting a pause on going out and looking for a new chief, uh, but I would not want to vote 
on making uh, uh, Chief Palmer anything other than interim for at least three to six months because I want to make sure that should the majority decide they want to go to BSO, it's like just a tease. You may, he already knows he's an interim. I would rather him be interim until we decide what we're going to do one way or the other. I think going to BSO is a horror. I would never want to do it. Uh, I will. Let's just say at this point, I would never want to do it. Uh, but you guys all want to get some numbers and stuff like that. And I just don't think we should be making the chief's position a permanent one if the permanency could be a very short time. Uh, but I have no problem putting the search on hold for, the, for between three to six months and giving him a, an opportunity uh, to fully win a so. I appreciate that because I, I do like the, uh, the compromise. I mean, because I'm ready to, you know, move forward with him being chief. Um, so I do appreciate the compromise. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Arcerio. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my thoughts are similar to those of uh, Commissioner Casciano. Um, I've been on the record multiple times prior to Interim Chief Palma coming here and, and when he came here about what I feel is the importance <coughs> of hiring from outside. That's what my gut tells mm -hmm. me. And you're always supposed to go with your gut. Um, in the six years I've been here, I've been burned a couple of times <coughs> doing, doing these types of decisions. So I don't want to be a hypocrite and now just immediately make Chief Palma chief. I like Chief a lot. I've had conversations with him. Part of it is I'm concerned, you know, he becomes the chief and then someone else does something and tries to take him down, and I don't want him to bear the brunt of that. Um, but I am open to suspending the search, give the interim chief a chance, give him three, six months. Um, I do believe that we should still get pricing for BSO. I'm not, I know people like to cut and paste things online. I'm not sold on going to BSO. But I want to do my due diligence, and I want to make sure that if we're going to consider it, now is the time. Mm -hmm. So I am in favor of suspending the search, um, but I do think that we should still get pricing on uh, BSO, and then we can we can look at apples to apples or what have you. I mean, contracts you can put in there what you want. If we want him to be the chief and we want to go to BSO, we make we put in the contract he's got to be the captain, which is like the chief in their their organizational chart. Um, but that's just, that's where I'm at. So I'm not ready to make him chief tonight, but I, I will go against my gut and strongly consider it. But again, providing that we look at all the options and, you know, we also, um, we do have an open investigation, not per se on the chief, but just in general on the department. And I think that we need to let all that stuff play out before we make a final decision. That's it. Thank you. So, David, do we need a formal? Uh, hold on. Commissioner Simone. Kale, let me ask. <clears throat> let me ask you a few questions. Where were we on the search? I know that we've already spent money. They've already done a brochure for us. Um, have they had any candidates that? No. So we're we're not that far along. Um, I just received a draft of the brochure on Friday. Um, so we are um, completed with uh, task one, which is interviewing myself, the commissioners, um, to come up with you know what we feel are the ideal candidate. Um, so we're we're done with task one. We may be in a little bit of, of of task two, but it has not gone live. It's not out there. There's no candidates um, that we've received yet. No. Okay. Thank you. Um... I honestly, <clears throat> I honestly don't know what to do with this. Um, it's come up rather quickly. I haven't had time to really digest it. I just learned about this uh, <clears throat> Monday during the agenda review. So I know I've been a proponent of going outside for a chief. You know, I think uh, interim chief Palma has done an excellent job. Um, 
He was tasked with a uh, very hard uh, job to clean up the department. I think he's done a, a great job at that. I know that um, actions, a lot of times, speak louder than words. I think his actions have shown um, you know, that he is up to the task. I'm just not sure I'm ready to make any decision tonight on this because I haven't had time to speak with people about it and really fully vet it the way that I would like to uh, before I make any decisions. Would three to six months work for you? What we're talking about, Antonio and I were mentioning. Three to six months would work. To, 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 before we, to, to, go, before we, to go looking back at it to see if we should change our minds and say yes. Yes. Okay. All right, Vice Mayor. I made a promise less than three months ago to two full rows of police officers and a packed house that we would not promote from within. I believe we probably would have heard exactly the same things after the first three months <clears throat> of the former chief sitting here or the former chief before them. I think this comes up too soon. I probably, other than Tony Correccia, know Mike Palmer longer than anybody else sitting in this place. I have nothing against them. I think he's a great guy, but three months for me, less than three months for me, is very difficult for me to say I want to suspend because to me, putting this on now is basically telling the rest of the population that within three to six months, he will be our police chief. I have no idea other than one or two things that I've heard, what has changed within the department, and I would love to have that un understanding but I made a promise to officers sitting here and they nodded their heads that we would not commit the third mistake that we've already done. And that's promoting from within. Um, I think bringing, uh, and so I've also been sent <clears throat> by a third party, some resumes to look at of very, very competent people. We said, let the chief um, apply if he chooses to do so. But I think this is really premature because less than three months, we can't figure out anything yet. And we've been there and done this several times. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. So I think this being on here right now is pretty premature. You vote to suspend, that's fine. We're still gonna owe some money to some people. And I doubt that they're going to sit there and then honor a contract later on if you choose to do something with it. So I have no idea what the legal implication is. So perhaps Mr. Tulsis can tell us. But what this is less, well, suspending a contract. If we have to then, I never read the, yeah, I don't know what we owe them afterwards if we have to go through with it regardless of whether we do the search or not. I, I made the recruiter aware of, of the agenda item tonight. Um, to find out where we're at in terms okay, so of a couple we hours or whatnot. And that's when he told me we're, we're through task one, which was, um, I think, $4,000, um, maybe in a little bit of task two. So I don't want to commit to just 4000 It could be four to six. But is there something, something in that contract that no, says there's that there's an that out we, close? No. Close. No. Okay. Wait, wait. <laughs> I mean, let me finish. There, there, yes, we would not have to move forward. We do not owe him the full amount of the contract. He would be fine with us just stopping it. Out of curiosity, if he's done a brochure, is that our or is that the product that's there? Um, that I don't know. Um, I mean, I have the draft of it, um, whether or not we can use it on our own or not. I, I don't believe that if after the time period you all decide on and we go back to him, I don't think he'd tell us, no, you have to start from the beginning. I, I was just curious as to who it yeah. belongs to. Again, I, you know, I made a promise to the department and the people we just wouldn't do this again. And that has nothing to do with the person who's in the position as much as it had to do with what has gone on previously. So right. I don't know what to do with this. Com oh. Commissioner Simone. Now I, <clears throat> I have another question for you. Is the, if we do suspend this, is the headhunter willing to pick it up, let's say in, three to six months and work with us again, or are they done with us? Um, I have a pretty good working relationship with him. Um, <clears throat> assuming that he's not overloaded with work at that time, I believe he would pick it up. But I, I can't guarantee that he's not, you know, they, they won't take on more work than they, they can handle. 
but I can't give you a definitive answer. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Rosario. If we were to continue the search, what was the timeline of implementation? When could we really expect to have a pool of candidates go through the interviews and make a decision? I, I'm thinking it would probably be about three to six months, no? So what's the harm in continuing the search but encouraging Interim Chief Palma to apply? And if we want, we can select him then. You know, sometimes competition's good. There was a gentleman up here tonight that we gave a proclamation to that at one time ran against me. Now we're friends. It's funny how those things work out, but it made me a better person. You know, he advocated for some things and, and through his advocacy, I was able to get something the international day with the city. It made me a better commissioner. So maybe at the end of the day, he applies, he gets the job, and it makes him a better person going through the process. I mean, there's nothing obligating us that we have to choose one of those candidates, correct? We could ultimately go with Chief Palmer. Or... All right. You guys are really going to make me lose it here. And Mike, I'm sorry if I blow this for you right here. Premature, I, I added this on Monday because I knew if our next meeting was going to be for several weeks and we'd be deeper and deeper into this at home. Right. And you guys sit here and you're asking a guy to apply for a position. He's got the position and you guys are ruthless. Come back. Hey, Mike, put your application in and we'll consider it. I apologize for that. You're talking about people that you made a promise to. They're here. They're here right now. You're probably going to hear from them and see how they feel. So they're here. And you know what? I'm sorry if I put this on prematurely. I think Mike is a great guy. I've spoke to people. They love it. The culture has changed. City manager said it's changed. You guys still want to jerk around and say, well, let's just keep on moving with this. Commissioner Kajana, I don't always agree with you, but thank you for standing up and saying, trying to put this on hold. And also Commissioner Rosario. But to sit here and say, you know what? How much have we invested? We invested $4,000. You know what? He's done more than $4,000 worth of work in the last few months. He's proven to me. You guys asked him to go in there and do what he needed to do. He did it, and then you guys don't want to go back to the investigation, but now you want to punish him even more. The guy's standing there, wants the job, wants the position. His team wants him to have it. Give him the damn job. I'll go, I'll go for the... I'll go for the freeze, but I would love for everybody to just see here and say, you know what, let's listen to what these people say. You know what, Mike? We're going to make you chief. All I'm saying, but you know, you guys sit up here and imagine being in his position. He's got his crew here, his people here, all backing him. You guys are saying, Well, maybe we should just continue with this. Doesn't make any sense. We backed him when we put him into that position. We're backing him this evening as we're speaking about some it. of us are. And and I think what we need to do is understand that, uh, as Commissioner Osario said, we've been burned in the past, we thought we made the right decisions in the past. And all we're asking for is a little bit more time. I don't think that should be a problem. I mean, that maybe that's a problem for you, but that's not a problem for the rest of us. I said the way I felt about your comment. It was some other comments that were made up here by other commissioners. They shouldn't be attacked for their, for their opinions. I'll leave it at that. Okay. So, David, do we need a motion to put a hold on the headhunter? Um, I think for purposes of providing direction to the city manager so that he can speak clearly to the consultant that you should make a motion to suspend the uh, process for a certain period of time. And then, you know, at the end of that period of time, then the city manager can talk to you and bring it back and see what you want to do. But I think you should have a motion so that he can advise the consultant that we're going to put this on hold for three months, four months, five months, six months, whatever it might be. Okay. Hope somebody would like to make Antonio? What, how many months would you be happy with? Three to six. Do you want to go three? Do you want to go six? I'll ask for those who were looking for three the, months. Three months. I'll go. Th I'll go three months. That's a motion. I'll make the motion for three to hold off on looking for a new chief for three months to give the chief an opportunity to continue. Is there a second? I, I'll second that for a quick discussion. Okay. I, I will. I will vote to suspend the search, but by no means is it a promise to 
the job for the interim chief. I, 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 I still need to do some research. I would like to sit with the chief, find out exactly what some of these changes are. And I, I just need some more time to think about it. So it's not a prom. I don't, I don't want to make a false promise, but I have no problem in honoring the mayor's request to suspend the search. For three months. For three months. Thank okay. You. We got a second. All right. Now there's right. no just lights up here. Just, just for there. the record, so three months takes you till about, let's say, September 15th. It's September 16th around there. All right. This time I'll open it up to the public. So if anybody... Yeah. You got three minutes. No. You got three minutes. I've known Mike for about 30 years. Mike is not beholden to anyone. To ask this guy to put his life on hold for three months, he's made some major moves. The camaraderie, uh, the culture has changed. We're a fractured police department. We had a lot of incidences going on. I could tell you this guy is as pure as the driven snow. He never got involved in anything. He was the guy in the back of the classroom watching all the craziness that was going on. Somebody said to me, he's been here 30 years. Why didn't he do something? How could he do something when he's not the chief? He's only been here three months, and he's already got people coming to support him now. I'm telling you, to ask him to sit back, he wants to do more things, but you can't if you have to look over your shoulder and someone else comes in. What do you think they're going to do to him? He's going to make some moves that some people are not going to like, but he could do it as chief. But if he has to worry about in three months to go back as a captain, he can't do that. Don't restrain this guy. If you, if you respect anything I have to say, I've been here 30 years. I've never gotten in trouble. I love this city. I love this police department. It's made me who I am. I'm telling you, if you respect anything I got to say, give this man a chance. And I know you made a promise uh, Commissioner, uh, Vice Mayor, I know you made a promise, but you made a promise to a fractured police department that were just grabbing at straws. Make that same promise to these people. If you ask them now if they want him to be the chief, they'll tell you. These are people that are here on their own time. They're here on their own time. They're like teachers. They don't go anywhere unless there's food and drinks. They're here on their own time. People that I respect, people that I work for, that are good, hardworking people. Look at them. If you want, I'll get a sheet. I'll have people sign. I'm begging you to give this man a chance. I promise you, you will not regret it. Three is a charm. Two before, this is the right guy right now. I, if you respect anything I have to say. And listen, if he doesn't work out, you guys got, you, go ahead, do what you got to do. But let him have your support. With your support, you can't imagine the things this guy could do. I'm telling you, I sit down and talk to him all the time. All the time. He's got great ideas. He's got a lot of things he wants to do. But you have to let him do it. You have to give him the support. Please, if you respect anything I have to say, give him that shot. And I'm sure there's other people going to say the same thing. I'm sorry I talked so long. I even got 20 seconds. Can I yield it to someone else? No. no? But anyway, I respect, I respect the commission. I respect all you people. This city I love more than life itself. I want to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Good evening, Tracy, resident of Margate. Um, I, I would like to say congratulations and I would like to commend you finding anybody in this police department that would step up and do what he's doing with this broken department you have right now. So you found him, keep him. This is ridiculous that you're making this man put his life on hold to say, am I going to be chief? Am I not? Am I? Am I not? This is crazy what you guys are playing games with people's jobs. And this is what I keep trying to tell you guys, but nobody wants to listen. Please give him the job. This is ridiculous. You already have police that are, are backing him. I see more police out on the street now. I've seen more tickets written. I've seen a ton of them on Southgate that are written. They need to be there. Thank you. I live on Southgate. I'm probably one that has not got a ticket, but 
Anyway, and as far as promises to people in departments, people are up for election this year, so promises mean nothing to nobody. Don't listen to promises. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Sergeant Crabtree with the Marty Police Department. I wanted to get up and give you guys a perspective from the police side. I'm glad Tony did too. Uh, first off, uh, everybody here that I know of is in support of the chief. There's nobody here you asked earlier. Um, when you guys appointed uh, Michael Palma as the interim chief, basically he was handed a police department that was shattered. We had lots of issues that ran for long before I even started at the department. So that's a huge hurdle to have to get over. And he has taken it one step at a time and has started to fix that. And it is noticeable. I am a supervisor. I see it in my guys. I see it in the road patrol. You see it in the fact that people want to come to work. They want to uh, improve the place. There are things that have been implemented that aren't even from Chief Palma, but they are a wash down because of the changes that he's made. Uh, in the commission meeting before uh, where we discussed the, whether to keep Chief Galaska, it was brought up about the um, thing about the environment for the women in this department. It has changed, okay? And it is changing every day. It is something that is improving. Uh, you guys talk about your last two times and it not working out or whatever. To be honest with you, if you had interviewed anybody in the department about the last chiefs that you guys are talking about, they could have given you examples of why they were not going to make good chiefs and probably would have had stuff brought up. Michael Palma is not one of those. I have He's worked here for 29 years. You guys talk about um, three months, how do you know he's gonna make a good chief? You have a 29 year career here that you can evaluate. That's the longest interview I've ever heard of. So that, I think that should be taken into consideration. You guys go outside, you have what, an hour long interview with somebody and you get a resume. You can evaluate Chief Palma by just asking the people of this department, what are their experiences with him? Was he a good supervisor? I know he's been my direct supervisor in the past and no issues. He was always there, good leadership. And like I said before, you put a mountain in front of him and he has stepped up to the plate. Um, you talked about the atmosphere in the department. I told you it has changed. The other reason is you guys go BSO, which I know you're not voting on tonight, you're gonna to lose that small town feel that we have with this police department that will be gone. Mm -hmm. And that is something that should be taken into consideration because Margate is about that small town feel. Uh, the other thing too is the reason I think you shouldn't just suspend it, you should give him the job, is don't make him clean the house and then have somebody else come in and take over for him. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, Julie. I made a mistake before, and I apologized for it. City Manager, Lori Marrera, Major Stransky, and whoever else. But I'm gonna tell you one thing I did this time. I went out into the streets, and I spoke to rank and file. And what I have been told is morale is up and things are getting done. Give them the job. Somebody got a one class for their students. Good evening. Vaughn Williams, rank and file. Rank and file for 22 years. And many of those years were spent working under the guidance of Michael Palmer. I'm not, I'm not just gonna say, give him the job, he deserves it. Strongly consider the man for this, for this position, strongly. Give it to him. Give him the opportunity to do what he has to do, but give him the tools he needs to keep the guys and girls coming. We have so many people coming into this department, so many fresh young faces, people who I could, I am old enough to parent, young 20-somethings who are full of fire and just really wanna do this. Give them the tools give us the tools we need to, to, to convince younger people to come here, more people to come here. I am 55 years old. The average age of my platoon is about, you know, about 40, 40. And with that comes all the aches and pains of, you know, getting older. I 
dragged a man into my patrol car the other day, and my back went into a spasm. You know, but this is what you're getting if you continue down the path that you're going. If you continue to just play with, hey, well, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Understand that there are many of us who want to pass on the knowledge that we have, want to see some fresh young faces in here, and then be able to bow out and say, you know what, this place is in good hands. We've taught them everything. They're under the guidance of an amazing, an amazing leader. What do you have to lose? Like, uh, like Sergeant Crabtree said, the man's got a 29-year interview. 29-year interview. And I can tell you from personal experience, I had a conflict with a fellow officer. And as my sergeant, he stood there and watched me and my fellow officer hash that out. We cussed at each other. We yelled at each other. And then he kind of brought us back to the issue at hand. What are you guys really arguing about? Well, we're arguing about this. How do we fix this? this? Well, this is how we fix it. This is how you fix it. And we walked out of his office more tightly bound than ever. He did that mid-conflict when any other officer would have been like, yeah, you know, you know this. And he was just like, no, what? I'm going to guide this. I'm going to guide this to a peaceful conclusion. He did that. So I think you have the answer you need. And you definitely see that we are here to kind of show you that you have the answer you need. It's just, you need to just, just go ahead and do it, you know? As we say, you know, what and get off or get off the pot. Step, you know, just step forward and say, this is the guy. This is your guy. You know, we believe he's your guy. And we're the, and we're the guys and girls who are working with him, you know, doing the things that he wants us to do. So please, just give him an opportunity. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Good evening. From what I have heard and seen by the amount of officers here today, I think that Interim Chief Palmer is doing a good job. Last time this was brought up at a meeting, it was disheartening and disappointing for our police department. I have heard that the majority of the department is very supportive, supportive of him from all the ranks. I've heard that they feel he is supportive and in turn they support him. There's good communication, guidance, and rapport, and they feel positive change. He has been a member of the police department of the Margate Police Department for a very long time. And I think he has the knowledge, the experience, and the connection with his department to be able to get this very difficult job done. I'm well aware that he was given this position as an interim, and that is what he agreed with. But he's doing a good job. If he has their support, if they are positive changes, why change things around and get somebody from the outside who probably has no interest other than the position? Some, someone that does not know the people in the department or cares. To them, this would just be a job. I think that Interim Chief Palmer is a positive influence and should, should be given the opportunity to get it done. Thank you. <clears throat> we heard from a number of the commissioners this evening. I know him. I like him. He's a great guy. I know him. I like him. He's a great guy. I didn't hear one thing about what his qualifications were. Obviously, we've got qualifications. We've got minimum qualifications. But one of the most important things in any decision you make is you're looking at it from a top-down perspective. And as a police force or any organization, it's a team. And you've got to have not only a top down, but you have to have the support from the bottom up. What I've heard here this evening is there's great support for this man from the bottom up. I don't know Mike Palmer from, from anybody. I mean, I, I haven't been here all that long. But what I've heard is that, that he has an integral team here. When you make a decision, a lot of times you can you, you look at and you can consider all the different possibilities. Well, should we do this? Should we do this? Should we do this? You'll have an unending number of possibilities of decisions you can make. You'll never make a decision if you consider the next guy, the next guy, the next guy. The most important thing is to make a decision and move on. That's the best you can do. 
you've got a person that's that's supported. You think he's a great guy. I suspect he's eminently qualified for the position. Stop, stop the consideration. Just move on. You always have the, the ability to fix it later if you have to. Doesn't sound like you're going to have to. Just move on. Move on. Thank you. So anybody else that would like to speak? All right, I want to say I appreciate every one of you for coming, and I'm sure, like, um, is it Lieutenant Crafter or Sergeant Crafter? Sergeant? Um, you said everybody that was here was, was in support of the chief. You know, when, when you guys, if we happen to come down to interviews, you could find somebody that's going to be really good, but you don't know how they're going to work out with the department. And like I said, when I met with the headhunter and I realized the type of person that I was looking for, Mike was the person. I heard from officers, sergeants, lieutenants, and even majors. He's doing an incredible job. So I don't know what much more you guys could actually want. This is probably the first time we've ever had so much input in a position that we hire and fire. We've got it from our city managers, the supervisor of the position. We got it from the rank and file. We're all below the chief, which I don't think we've ever asked, well, not in this much depth um, as to what they thought the, the new chief would be like. But there's no better interview than we could have just had right now with the people speaking, the residents speaking. And as one person put it, you're putting this guy on a three month hold. Um, the vice mayor's light is lit, but I will make a motion to amend the motion. I'll make an amendment to the motion that we make Chief Palma chief. You wake up in the morning and decide you're putting this on the agenda. You're the one who's put us all in this position. You're talking about me? Yeah. I know how it got put on the agenda. So you did it. Tommy Rosano. All of a sudden, I'm Tommy talking. Tommy Rosano put something on the agenda. It's Tommy's idea, so he's virtually against it. 